live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Oracle Modern Customer Experience 2017. Brought to you by Oracle. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas. This is Silicon Angles, theCUBE. Our flagship program, we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the co-founder of SiliconANGLE. Show with my co-host, Peter Burris, with SiliconANGLE's Wikibon.com, head of research. Our next is Aaron Scheidler, VP of Cloud Industry Product Development. A lot there, cross-industry, horizontally scalable product development. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks for joining us. Thank you. So, I mean, there's a lot going on in this show. Modern CX is the hashtag, it also is the theme. It's not modern marketing, cloud experience show, it's an integrated, message with one clear message, customer experience. Everything, that's the, the end game of this platform. Yeah. Um, it's hard. Take a minute to just talk about, in context, it's at the table. What's happening? What, what, why is all this the focus now? Yeah, I think it's interesting. Over the past 10 years, we went from everyone having structured on-premise applications that took a year to two years to manage and upgrade and all of a sudden all these great cloud innovations started coming into the picture and the question was, how do we introduce them? So the business made buying decisions, they bought the great capabilities and now they're trying to figure out how do we move more to the yeah. cloud for the agility that we get, but more importantly, how do we start standardizing, creating a platform for taking these capabilities forward for our customers? We had an earlier segment today, it felt like a history class because we're all like historians talking about the old days, but if you think about the old role of software over the years, shrink wrap software, downloaded it from the internet, mm -hmm. SaaS, and now going to the next level is a new kind of modern version of SaaS, whether you call it infrastructure as a service, platform as a service and SaaS, but basically it's in the cloud. Yeah. Okay, all cloud all the time, on premise or in, the, or in the public cloud, which you guys have. This requires in more intelligence, this adaptive machine learning, AI, augmented in intelligence thing is happening. This is making smarter customer experiences. What does that actually mean? <laughs> because yeah. you're, this, is your, this is your wheelhouse. Yeah, no, and smarter, it's a great question. It's probably the talk of the hallways uh, throughout the course of the week is how do we uh, make our application smarter? And I think there are two parts to it. One is you have to make it simpler. So we just talked about the platform and trying to identify what are those key processes. Uh, for me, from an industry perspective, it's what are the key processes in, in manufacturing uh, what are the key processes in pharmaceuticals? What are the key processes in automotive? And how do we deliver a solution mm -hmm. there? But just doing the transactional stuff was yesterday's news. The question is really, how do we start to take data and information that we have along with some science and create a different experience? Create one that we take the learnings from old and apply them so that the next best offer that we make is one that's based on you and other people like you and the products that you've bought. So we're really looking at just baking in that intelligence along the way so that sales reps and service reps don't have to figure it out themselves. They leverage yeah. the power of the company and the data. It sounds before. easy, but it's not. But I want to ask a specific question because one of the, the, the ethos of the cloud is horizontally scalable. And that's a, a nice way to think about data. And we've heard that throughout the, the show so far. But in the industries, in vertical industries, there's unique things right? yeah. <laughs> that require some specialism. Yeah, no, that's so right. That's, so you have a, this kind of notion of, I need horizontally scalable, but also I got to have some specialty um, differentiation for the apps. Yeah. So this is, a, this, is an, this is a key part of the platform that you guys are building. How do you, how do you talk to that to customers? Because the old days was full, full vertical stack. Here's your software. Yeah. Retail industry, health and human services, whatever it is. Yeah. How is that different now? We're, we're leveraging the same horizontal capabilities so that we don't have to redefine it. I would argue that we've started from a smarter place based on our, our history at Oracle. We understand that companies want to work with customers, customers may work with partners, and customers may also be a contact that's part of a household. So as you start to build that horizontal set of capabilities for the platform, those things were taken into mind. But your points are spot on in that at the end of the day, Nobody cares whether you have a great horizontal platform. What they care about is, as an automotive manufacturer, can my OEMs talk to the dealers in a way that makes sense? Can we help pass leads that come in from customers uh, to the manufacturer efficiently to the right uh, company to be able to support them? And so it requires us to address, I call it three area, uh, excuse me, six areas. Uh, the data model, how do we define data for the um, industry? Uh, the business policies and processes. How do you take those leads and get them to the right people in context of the industry requirement? 
the next piece is user experience. Uh, Branch Banker has a completely different view than a person that's doing your financial wealth advising mm -hmm. across the table. is different than me using my mobile application uh, from my home to, to transact. Uh, integrations are also important. Uh, Oracle comes with a little bit of uh, requirement around how do I complete end-to-end -end because we provide end-to-end -end capabilities. So if I'm a bank, how do I integrate my front-end applications, my CX apps, into my core banking platform applications? If I'm a communications company, how do I tie into OSS and BSS systems? So integration becomes a key requirement. Uh, Two more left, come on. I'm getting them, I'm getting them. <laughs> uh, analytics, different measurements and metrics for each industry as to how you're going to adapt and perform. And then finally, we are talking about cloud. Uh, and cloud means that we're taking on some of the responsibility of making sure that regulatory and compliance requirements for the data centers that we support and manage are also supported. Also, per, and how they consume the software. That's exactly that right. It's now I moving to a subscription model. I think yeah. it's the seventh, which you may want to add, which is semantics, especially as we start thinking about AI. Yeah. What do things mean? It's more than just the measurements. So I, I want to I tie this back to, uh, to the whole concept of CX though. Yep. Um, the historical orientation of vertical industry was these businesses are common or similar because they have similar assets. Retail had a store, had a warehouse, had the, you know, point of sale, those types of things. Um, digital transformation reduces the specificity of those assets. Yeah. As Amazon's a retail company, as much as Walmart is. They're competing. Yeah. At, but they have very, very different arrangement of assets. Uh, does CX now become, or does, does, the, does the new vertical orientation now, not your arrangement of assets, but the customers you serve? Where these customers have common characteristics, and companies that are in transportation, transportation serve customers in this moment, in this way. Companies in retail serve customers in this moment, is in this way. And that's what's really driving so much of the CX, is a, the vertical orientation moving from an asset focus to a customer focus, a need focus, a moment focus. What yeah. do you think? No, I think it certainly makes it easier. And in fact, you use the one word that's sort of binding all of them together, which is digital. And uh, maybe the second uh, word would be real time. And so, uh, whether I'm talking to a sick code of retail, meaning traditional retailer, or a bank that wants to have a better retail experience, all of those are about, do you know me? Can you provide me a personalized journey uh, through the process, and can you do it without necessarily engaging with people through the entire experience? Now, omni-channel is certainly important, but I can't tell you the last time I went into a branch bank location, all of my work's really been done on a digital channel. With that said, the processes are still unique. So when I talk about my cellular phone and management of the cellular phone, the minutes make more sense to me than if I'm talking to my banking application and the dollars make sense to me. So the ingredients that I highlighted before in terms of an industry solution are still relevant. Some of the themes that you highlighted around digital transformation and real time are definitely new to this uh, new world that we're in uh, around customer Which engagement. industries are you guys supporting? Because again, you know, industries have unique requirements, yeah. but um, you have a platform, so conceptually, and you should be able to spin up these industries pretty quickly. Which ones do you guys have supported uh, and what are, what are coming? So I think there, there are two parts that I'd highlight. One is um, it, it is easy to set up because we set the platform up in the beginning knowing we wanted to deliver industry specific <laughs> capability. So I think that's a differentiator that, uh, that Oracle's providing. But I think the second piece is there are several industries that uh, in fact customers can use our capabilities horizontally to support and we've got uh, about 20 industries that customers are um, purchasing our products to use in. With that said, we've put specific investment into areas like communications, uh, banking, uh, uh, consumer goods and retail, and there's some synergies there that you highlighted where consumer goods companies want to get to know their customers more directly, so, so lots of synergies there. We just uh, announced and released a higher ed set of capabilities uh, as well, and a roadmap for several others. So those are the key primary targets that we had with uh, more to come this year. That's just super, super awesome. What's um, unique, share with the folks, take a minute to explain, what's unique going on in your job um, that, that they may not know about that you could share? Um, is it the data that you, that you watch as a product developer, you got to look at, I mean, you got to, you, to use cloud terms, stand up solutions fast, yeah. that your customers have to now do that. Yeah. Whether it's an app, it should be agile. You know, three weeks, innovation is complete. That's kind of the cycles we're, we're seeing. Yeah. in cloud, three week development, that's it. Not three years or three months, three weeks. 
Yeah. I mean, imagine that. So yeah. imagine a three-week development cycle. What does it take? What are the most important things that people should know about that you're working on and that make that happen? Yeah, I think the, and I, I've met with uh, a dozen customers already here this week, and I think the most common discussion is, uh, we've got a lot of the capabilities, we need to define what our vision is. So, uh, while you've got some on-premise capabilities still, now you're augmenting it with things like data science and other ingredients, the question is, what's the vacation you're going on? What are the stops along the way that take you 10 days to 30 days? And how do we start to create a vision that goes end to end from the time we engage with our customers for the first time to the time we engage with them for the hundredth time? So I would say most of that is really around helping customers strategically think about how these solutions are going to tie together, what business value and benefits they're going to be delivering, and how do we leverage the assets that they have today in order to do that. So is it the vision of Oracle to the customer or the customer's vision of how it's going to use technology and how that's going to be reflected back in Oracle? Or a combination of both? It's a little bit of both. We've had uh, several customer advisory boards this week where we gather feedback from customers. But the reality is, if you have a, an advisory board with all automotive manufacturers, where we had about 25 companies come together this week, they all have great ideas. But what's interesting is you, when you bring a retailer in to talk to them and have them highlight some of the things that they're doing that are working in their industry that are leading edge and may generate some new ideas. So I think a lot of the customers are looking really for Oracle to sum up all of the engagements that we have with these companies, come up with those key things that we think could transform their industry and then deliver it as a simplified solution so that they can uptake it in 10 to 30 days. So they're kind of pulling you into the direction of Oracle becoming a digital capabilities company. Yeah, th that's right, in terms of how can you A, help us with vision, and then B, help us deliver the pieces that make sense for Oracle. And we've got a rich set of partners as well. It's, it's hard to leave them out in terms of digital agencies uh, and or um, implementation partners. We also have partners that have built and developed uh, innovative capabilities for industry that we've integrated into these solutions. But I think in terms of the total vision, we have a unique perspective that an individual customer, company, or industry may not have. My final question for you is, um, everyone likes to know what's the hallway conversation. Um, and that's where you hear a lot of the you know, commentary on, wow, great keynote. But I want to ask you specifically around what customers are saying. You've been doing a lot of customer activities in the hallways and meetings. We're hearing some. What's your take on the hallway customer, uh, customer conversations? What are they talking about in the halls? Yeah, automation, I think, in terms of, uh, and, and uh, the AI portions of what we're discussing. How can we make the resources that we have smarter, uh, make them more intelligent about the learnings that we have as an overall company, and then to be able to parlay that into the processes, not as a separate set of flows, but into the processes that we educate today. And it's interesting, you could highlight a buzzword bingo card with things like IoT and AI and... Uh, ML and VR and AR, and machine exactly learning, right. virtual reality, augmented reality. But the question isn't, can you do those things? The question is, can you do it in context of yeah. the customer experience to change the game? And that's really the fun part I of this I had a conversation week. with Robert Scoble, who's a futurist, uh, and, and uh, a friend, and he's really been talking about this mixed reality. And, and he's talking about augmented reality and virtual reality, but if you think about what you guys are doing here with you know, modern CX, is the mixed reality from the consumer perspective is wherever they are. <laughs> you know, right. I'm shopping, or I have a wearable, or maybe someday a headset, or some sort of augmented experience. You got to be ready for it. Yeah. You're the guy who has to build the products and lay the architecture down. So, What's the roadmap look like for you guys? Without giving away the secrets, you know, you know, for, for, for a customer uh, that may be watching, what's the arc for the product development team? What are the top priorities? I think there are two big things that I would highlight. One is simpl simplification. I think uh, all of the cloud choices that customers had for a long period of time gave them access to innovations that they hadn't had before. The question was the practicality and how yeah. can we start pulling those together. So Oracle really has a responsibility to simplify that set of discussions. And the second part is we've got to innovate. We've got to show people that there is a path to leverage all of those mm -hmm. buzzword bingo items in your day-to-day -day job to deliver business value. So I think you'll see out of us taking some of the themes that you're hearing about as individual conversations and start baking them into the DNA and fabric of the solutions. Oh, well, I've seen Amit Zavery, Cube alumni, has been on uh, multiple times, great yeah. executive, super smart, yeah. big fan of his work, um, trying to get developer-oriented around cloud native. Um, Siddharth R was also, Agarwal was also on the Cube in our offices. And there's movement with an Oracle to be cloud native. Is there a developer plan, or is that just groping for relevance in the outside of Oracle world? Is there 
adopt to be connected in the cloud native world where Oracle's now playing with public cloud? What's, how do you talk to that to customers? Because you don't see a lot of Oracle developers out there outside of Oracle. You have a lot of Oracle developers yeah. doing DBAs and, and system work. How about that developer, app developer? How do you get them, is there a plan? No, I think it's the innovation and the discussion about innovation. There are probably people other than me that will highlight some of the details, but uh, you may have seen some press releases recently that talk about how we're uh, introducing some innovation centers for uh, us to recruit the types of people that you're highlighting and change the perception, uh, yeah. if you will, on some of the things that Oracle's done in the past to highlight some of the innovations that we're delivering now in cloud. I mean, you got a lot of platform value to potentially share That's right. to some app developers out there on iOS. So there is a plan. Absolutely a plan. Okay, Aaron, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate the insight. Vice President of in Cross Industry uh, Product Development here at Oracle and Cloud's customer, Modern CX. Hashtag Modern mm -hmm. CX. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier with, with uh, Peter Burris from Wikibon. We'll be right back with more after this short break.